How's it going guys? Nick here from Techno Jedis. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a tutorial on how to use Evernote with Google Keep. Um, I'm going to be showing you an app that I use to control my phone so you can see on screen what I'm doing on my phone. It's called MobiZen. It's a really good app. Um, this is it over here. On Google Drive, what I usually do is when I'm meeting up with people, Google Keep is a thing of Google Drive. And um, what I usually do is if I'm meeting up with someone, um, obviously this is my Android phone, the reason why I like Android is because of the widgets, and this over here is a widget. So what we'll do is if I meet up with someone, what I'll use Google Keep for is just as a little quick notepad, nothing that needs to stay for longer than a few weeks. Um, I really use the remind me function because Evernote I use all my reminders and all that kind of stuff. What I use Google Keep for is a very quick syncing thing on notes. So if I'm having a conversation with someone on the phone, I will type out what was said, um, what was said. I'll type it all out over here. If they tell me books that I need to read, or if I meet with someone and they suggest some books or whatever that I need to read, um, as you can see, that happened over here in this one, thinking slow and fast. Um, a nudge that someone told me, I just literally stuck it out quickly. I should actually put this into Evernote, but I'm not using it like that. For me, Google Keep is like my little screwdriver and Evernote is my power tool. Um, I think someone mentioned that online somewhere, that is a good analogy, is that um, you, can't, you don't need, need to throw Google Keep out just because you're using Evernote, because it's a really great um, note-taking app in its own right. So you can see over here, this is Google Keep, and there isn't any rich text formats. It's literally just normal text. So what you can do is um, you can put checkboxes and stuff into it. Um, you can add things and you can tick them off and you can do whatever you like over there. Um, yeah, you can tick them all off. And you can um, shift some things around here. You can do it by color. You can move it around, you can put whatever you like. Um, and then also there's a nice app, if you're looking on the Google, on, if you're using the Chrome app for it, there's a nice app that you can use over here that you can color, you can think, do things by colors. You can see the yellow as well, personals, and the blue, gray, this kind of thing over there. Is actually meant to be that color. Anyway, so that's, you can do everything by that. I don't use Google Keep for much more than just taking quick notes. So that was all that over there. And how I use them together is that I use this just as my little notepad. That's all that Google Keep is for me. It's not a reminder thing. I use Wonderlist purely for reminders. Any reminder that I need goes into my Wonderlist. Any small note that I need to make when I'm talking to someone on the phone goes over here. And everything else goes into Evernote. So if I've got something more, and check out my last video, I went a little bit more into and the benefits of Evernote. And one of the first things, as you'll see over here, I'm just going to recap quickly, is that I've only got three, um, three notebooks, or two, including a trash can. What I have is an inbox, a filing cabinet, and trash. So a lot of people, what they do is they'll have a personal notebook, they'll have a work notebook, they'll have many other notebooks for many different things. I only have an inbox, which at the moment I'm a tech... For me, the goal for inbox is always inbox zero, so not having anything in there. At the end of every day, every two days, I will go back to this inbox and resort everything. What do I mean by that? So I will be writing something today, and it's very awesome. And that's one of my notes. And I've got another one that I want to write as well about the weather which I actually would never do because I don't keep track of stuff like that. What are, what, what are some things that I actually do? So let's let's have like a journal and we can write whatever I want in there. We can have something like a plan for team building. Team building. And we can also have a like pack list. Let's see how pack list is a good idea. A pack list for overseas. And what I'll do then is I will obviously type all my stuff in to my checkboxes over here, some shoes, shirt, um, whatever else, whatever else, whatever else. And then obviously what's really nice about Evernote is that you can put a nice little reminder on it to remind me in a week. And what I'll then do is add tags to this. So for me, I'll put in overseas trip as a tag, which is completely normal. You guys would do that. I can do a pack, like a pack list. I'll put 
checklist in as well. I know it sounds redundant, but it isn't. And I'm going to be going overseas in March. Oh, okay, let's not do March. Let's do like November because that's still far ahead. So 2015. What I'll do over here is um, ideally I'll put this a week before my trip. So I'll redo the thing just so that I can then go back to November. I'll know that I'll need all of this in November. So let's put it at the end of October just so that I can start thinking a little bit about my trip. And press enter. And then I will... Yeah, so that looks pretty good with tags. Let's say team building. I put a full stop before this because it's part of the... You'll see these are the only tags I have at the moment. Let's say that it's a work tag. Work is already there, which is great. And it's team building. I'll put a full stop because this is more like something that happens often. Team building, I think it's already there. And um, I'll do like it's a reference. Oh, it's actually a resource. Yeah, it's a resource. And you can put your data in whatever you want to call it. That over there. And then journal, you can put the dates in, you can do like the 19th of April 2015, April 2015, um, 2015. I've got all of these different tags. I go quite go into depth. Obviously, I don't do this for everyone. I will normally just do the April one, but because I haven't created these all before, they're all there. And then weather's stupid, so I'm not going to do that. And then something is awesome. So I'll do like journal as well. And yeah, I'm nice. Okay, so the cool thing about tags is that you can assign, as you've seen, multiple tags to each of these things. So effectively, what you're doing is you're creating, if you're wanting to work it the way that people do it in notebooks, is I've got this in three different notebooks. Um, like for this team building thing over here, it's under my resources notebook, it's also under my team notebook, and it's also under my work notebook. If you're working everything by folders, all you can do is put it into one folder, into one notebook. Whereas you can split it up amongst this. And what's really helpful is if you want to do team building, it'll come up, plan for team building. If you want to, if you want to search for everything that had to do with team building, you can go team building. And I'll show you all this stuff. Ideally, there would be more. And yeah, so now let's move these around. So I'm going to first sort all these tags out. And this journal over here is a what. Remember, we only have a few different things. We don't want to have as many of these as possible. It just gets a little bit crazy. So let's put April 2015 into there. We can put 19th of April into April as well. This sounds a little bit confusing. It isn't. You'll see there is method behind this. 2015 is when. So you see already what, you, what you've done is um, April 2015. Yeah, that's right. So let me check this all out. Um, yeah, so there's the, the when everything is all sorted out over there. You want to keep coming back to this to get this as small as possible. So this is just a normal tag. This is also just a normal tag. This is also just a normal tag. So then those will all be closed up. So all of these now have been tagged. And so what I'll do with all of them is I'll move them all into my filing cabinet. So this for me, Evernote is my, I, I do absolutely everything through Evernote. So, or actually not absolutely everything, because obviously I use Google Keep and use a few other things, but if I want to remember anything, if I want to file in cabinets, um, remember Evernote's motto is remember everything, and that's the idea. If there's anything that I want to put into a filing cabinet so that I can remember it, it comes into here. If I want to just a little quick notepad, and what I'll do is I'll put it into Google Keep. So the two of them, you are meant to use them together. That is the goal. I know some people who just use and Google Keep, I think that isn't as versatile as Evernote. I think in some ways even Evernote lacks, it lacks um, what, it, what I need for it to do this, so that's why I use Wonderlist. Yeah, so I mean that's it for the three, the, um, the three things. As you've seen as well, and there's something really helpful on, on, your, on um, Android, which is the Evernote widget. It's on your desktop. You can customize this to be as many and things as you want. You just need to open up the Evernote widget over here somewhere. I just need to find it quickly. And you go into the Evernote widget, it shows you all the different things that you can then, hang on, I'm being a little bit silly. On the desktop, what you will do is, 
So now I can't remember exactly how to edit this. Um, come on, Nick. Look, you guys can figure it out. It's not very difficult. What I've done is this is just everything that I use at the moment, all of these things, all the things that I'm currently using. So if I want to search for something in Evernote, I do it over there. Um, and if I want to take a photo of a document, I use this quite often. So I will take photos of, um, of documents like this. And what's really awesome is I'm on Evernote Premium. And so what that actually means is that when this gets uploaded to Evernote for me, um, the OCR will go will be working in the background to then recognize all of these um, recognize all of these and um, these texts and all that kind of stuff. So that's saved into my Evernote now. And then if I want to search for whatever that is, if I want to search for Trollop, it will show up in my Evernote. So that's another thing that you can use Evernote for. And um, there's a lot of things you can attach. What I generally do is if I've got a meeting with a group of people where I'm discussing something, I go into my record thing over here. I'll be making notes on my computer, but as you can see over here, um, it's also busy recording the meeting. So that's also something that I do. I will record the meeting and then I'll compose my notes in it. Um, obviously I won't do that on my phone. You won't do that on your Mac um, or your laptop. Yeah, so there's lots of other stuff that you can do for Evernote. Evernote is fantastic. Um, it's a really great app. But I definitely encourage you using it. So remember to check out the resources of Michael Hyatt and Jamie Rubin. They are really excellent. Check out anything on Going Paperless. There's some really great bloggers out there who've got some really great ideas. Cool. Other than that, I'm out of here. It's been real, guys. It's been great chatting to you. Thanks for your feedback on the YouTube channel as well. Um, let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see or have us review. Other than that, cool. We'll be out of here. It's been real, guys. Cheers.